Welcome everybody. We're so glad you're here today. Let's do me. Let's do a favor here. We're because we're connecting with different locations, one church. So in your Hardy County, Bee Ridge, Fruitville, Bayshore Gardens. It's their first birthday. Their birthday today. Their year with us. Um, Riverview. Uh, downtown, West Bridenton, North River, Lakewood Ranch, online, on demand, penitentiaries, jails. Let's just welcome each other. Come on, guys. As we join you, you're joining us. One church in many, many locations. And we are so glad to, you're here. And I'm what an honor to preach God's word under the leadership of our pastor, Pastor Randy and Amy. And I love, guys, this Christmas season. Oh, it's the most wonderful time of the year with kids jingle belling and everyone telling you to be of good cheer. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Um, the happiest, hap, hap, happiest season of all because there's uh, parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting and caroling, caroling out in the snow. Not in Florida, in the beach. But, but someone should write a song about that. I think it's, it might catch over this season. <laughs> I love it. I love it all about it. Yes, there's a lot of stuff that gets in the way, but this is a season when those of us who follow Christ, those who have said, yes, Jesus is who he says he is, and he did what he said he did, this is the season we celebrate his birth. This is the, the coming of the King, our Savior on our Lord. And as we praise him and we gather together, I pray that you will start to, at all the campuses, that you will prayerfully consider who to invite and what service to go to as families and friends and single and young and old and all nations, tribes, and tongues in worshiping the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's a wonderful time. So let's pray and we'll dive into God's word. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We are honored, Lord to be able to, to exalt the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray that in this season we will stop and reflect, reflect and remember who you are, what you did, and why we're here, Lord. We love you. As we open your word, Lord, I pray you will teach us and in, challenge our hearts and prune us and encourage us, Lord, to be the people you've called us to be for your glory and your honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. When I, when I say a name, uh, many times it, it is an associate with something. It is associated with something. For example, if I say the name, uh, something like a, um, Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, is it is associated with great wealth. If I say the names like um, uh, Michael Jordan or Tom Brady or in lieu of the World Cup that's going on, Messi and Ronaldo. You know, uh, by the way... Don't send me the results. Don't tell me who wins. I don't want to know. I'm doing something right now. I will figure it out when I get home, okay? This is a time when we don't say things. Oh, did you hear the results? No, I don't want to hear the results. I'm actually working the only day of the week. I'm working, okay? <laughs> well, anyway, when I mention those names, when I mention those names, you, you go and it's associated with great athletes that have, have accomplished amazing things in the athletic world. It also works... In other parts where if I mention the name Hitler, it's associated with evil. In the Bible, names are important. And God reveals who he is through the names that he gives himself in Scripture. So we learn about the character, the nature of God as we study the names. Names are important. They're a big deal. Why? Because God is a big deal. So it's kind of a big deal. And that's why we call this series, It's Kind of a Big Deal. Because today we're going to look at actually one of the names of God. Next week our pastor, Pastor Randy, is going to come and he's also going to give us another aspect of the name of God. And I pray it will whet your appetite to study over the, this Christmas season the names of God and what it reveals about who He is and what He does. In the third week we will look at how God's story in your life is a big deal. And in doing so, we will celebrate the coming of our Lord in this season. The Old Testament in the Bible is written in Hebrew. 
The Hebrew language is beautiful. And it's written, the names are revealed in the Hebrew language. So we have to do a bit of digging to understand. For example, the name Jehovah Shalom is the Lord is my peace. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is the one who heals. Jehovah Jireh, he's the one that provides. Someone should write a song about that name as well, Jireh. If you've been around church, we sing that. Today I want us to focus on the first name that God reveals about himself in the first chapter, in the first verse of the first book, in Genesis chapter 1, 1. This is what we read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Stop right there. In that one sentence, we can learn a lot about this God. The term in the Hebrew is Elohim. So, wherever you're sitting, whatever your campus is, we're all going to do it together. We're going to say the word together. Elohim. One, two, three. Elohim. Good. Interaction is a wonderful thing. Elohim. Elohim is the divine creator. This is what we can learn from it in the first few verses, the first verse. Elohim is transcendent. In the beginning, God created. He is distinct from creation. He is not created. He is not creation. God is not the tree. God is not, as others will say, in, in whatever created being. God stands outside, distinct from creation. Why? Because He created it. In the beginning, Elohim created. The second thing I want you to notice is it's in the beginning, Elohim. God, Elohim, created time. Time. Elohim decided when beginning began. Now, no, no, no. Gra <laughs> grammatically, that sentence doesn't make sense, but you know what I'm saying. He is the one that stands outside of time, the creator of time, that began something in time. He created time. Elohim, we also see that he exists outside of space and matter. In the beginning, God created the heavens and an earth. There was a time when there was no heavens and earth, but he still, still existed. So he's not bound by space and matter and time like you and I are. This is an awesome God. This is in the first verse of the first book of the Bible. Elohim. He is transcended. He created time. He's outside of time. Actually, in Hebrews 11, in the New Testament, tells us that God created what is seen from what is unseen. He took something out of nothing. Many believe, sadly, that nobody created some, everything out of nothing. You need to have a lot of faith for that. But the Bible teaches us that someone created everything out of nothing. And that reveals that someone is awesome. There is intelligent design in created world. In Jeremiah 23, 24, it says, Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. In other words, he's not just out there floating in the sky somewhere. He fills, he occupies he is involved in his creation. He is not, as some would say, started creation like a clock and let it go. God, Elohim, we hear, we see, we learn. He's involved. Elohim also exists in perfect community. Let me explain this. This word Elohim is a plural word. Someone would say majestic plural. El means strong one. It, the I am ending in Hebrew is the plural, im. It's a plurality. Here we see the seeds of something we will learn throughout the whole Bible that reveals that God exists in perfect community, one God. As we, as we read later on then, we reveal, it is shown to us, He exists as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This triune God, which then church history had to give a term to, Trinity, we believe, Elohim, 
as the, is the beginning of the Trinitarian revelation of God. One God in three different persons. The, he exists in perfect community. He doesn't need anything outside of himself. If you come from a religion or a, a, a worldview that is monotheistic, in other words, one, your God is powerful, but your God has to create to reveal love and to know what love is. In a Trinitarian view of God revealed in the term Elohim, and then in the rest of Scripture, we see God in perfect community and therefore needing nothing outside of himself. He doesn't need creation. He created. And that's the question I'm going to ask him when I get to see him. Why? Elohim, we also see the first characteristics of this God is that he is creative. In the beginning, God created. And we, science observers of this world and astronomers of space, we are still discovering the majesty and the beauty and the creativity and the glory of this God that spoke and said, let it be. Wow. He is creative. So by the way, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, as a church, we are to be creative. We are to be creative in the way we do things. We are to be creative in, 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 in our businesses, in our life. Where are the followers of Christ that are creating the movies? Where are the poets and the artists? And there's a creativity that the people of God is a reflection of who he is. It's the first thing we hear about this God. Elohim created. Now, if you're like me, I, I want to read the rest of the few verses because it, it reveals a little bit more. Let's read Genesis 1, 1 to 3. I want to engage your mind to give you truth to then, I, I, we're going to see, some, uh, uh, we're going to see a, a few things, to experience a few things, to engage your heart. And at the end, in all our services, I don't know where you are, if you're home, and at all our services, we're going to be worshiping and singing together to this majestic, incredible, awesome God. So I praise preparing your heart. In Genesis 1, 1 and 3, it says this, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over its waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. I love this revelation of the God we worship in the Bible. This Elohim brings order out of chaos. This rubbish heap this chaotic, formless, empty, formless earth, God brought light, order, structure, purpose, boundaries. If you read the rest of the chapter, the water you go to here, no more. The seasons you go, this is the track that you will go in the skies, the sun and the stars and the moon and all that. There is beautiful order and structure and boundaries for the freedom of His creation. It's beautiful which, by the way, as followers of Christ, we are to bring order to disorder. Amen. We are to bring um, uh, order to chaos. Amen. And if you think you're listening to my voice, and you say, well, I have messed. My life is in chaos. Submitting and doing it the way of Elohim. Yeah. He will bring order to your chaos. He will bring beauty to your garbage dump. He is the one that can create and look after the creation. He can look after you because he cares. Why do I say that? Let's continue to reading. Because sometimes I read this and I study this. And this week I was studying. I'm like, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is an awesome God. And out there, but it's so out there. And if you read the rest of the chapter, chapter 1. Which, by the way, we're not in it until the end. In verse 26 and 28 it says this. Then God said... Let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. And fill the earth and subdue it. 
And rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over every living creature that moves to the ground. That God Elohim created humanity in his image. We are to mirror him. We are not God. He is God. We reflect him. There's, we represent him on this earth. We are to look after the creation, rule over Interesting, I like in the first two chapters of the Bible, Adam was given, had a job and a home before he got a wife. Yeah. That's good advice, young man. <laughs> and all the moms went, yeah. <laughs> we represent creation. The second thing I want you to notice is that there's purpose and value to every human. Because we're made in His image. Unique, special, revealing the Elohim God. There's value to you. We are to bring order out of the chaos of society. When a follower of Christ, when a follower of the God Elohim lives according to his standards, his way, according to his boundaries for the protection, our protection. It becomes light in the world. It becomes, it should become something beautiful to see. And as followers of Christ, God said, you're going to be my representatives on this earth. Amen. Elohim, for some reason, chose you and I to represent him on this little world we call earth. Job chapter 12, verses 7 to 9, it says, Ask the animal kingdom. Ask creation to show you my handiwork. In Psalm 19, verses 1 and 2, it says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Very important that night after night they reveal knowledge. Oh, let me tell you what this Elohim is like. Let me just take you to a little bit of what we know. This is, a, this is an awesome divine creator God. With the amount of technology we have today and the greatest minds we have in this world, which by the way, I am not one of them, so I had to go study and look at NASA and all these. It's amazing. We have this telescope that sits, I don't know how many miles above the earth, the James Webb telescope that can look into billions of light years away. Okay, and we've got these spacecrafts, Voyager 1 and 2, that were sent in the 70s and is going out further, 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 and the further it goes, we get to see more and more. We know nothing of the known universe. And the more we're getting to discover, it's amazing. One thing we noticed, by the way, when I say we, I don't mean David, okay? I mean humans, we, humans, okay? <laughs> we, you know, I'm like, no, that wasn't me, okay? We, we had to measure, and we couldn't do it in miles and kilometers, it was just so big, so vast. So we had to come up with a light year, okay? Light travels, engage the brain, in 186,000 miles a second. So light can travel seven times around the earth in a second. Okay, that's fast. That's fast than most people are driving these days, okay? <laughs> Elohim said, let there be light. <laughs> a light year is the distance Light travels in one year. So it's 186,000 times one seconds of the year, which leads us to this number. A light year is 5.88 trillion miles is one light year, okay? That is the measuring stick. That's the measuring one we need to talk about the known universe. Known universe. Okay, let, let me give you a little bit. Our street is called the solar system. And the solar system is beautiful. The solar system are eight planets revolving around our star, star called the sun. 
And the sun is this explosion of hydrogen reactions that actually it takes eight and a half minutes to get to where we are. We are the third rock from the sun. And we're all rotating in our axis. The earth. It's beautiful. I, I am so fascinated now. I've got caught. The earth, when we see views of the earth, look how beautiful it is. There's no, you don't see your house or turmoil. You don't see boundaries or countries. We live on this rotating ball. The earth, any inclination, any way, by only a little bit, and life would never exist. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Let me tell you about one of the planets, Saturn. You know the cool one with the rings? Those rings are made of ice and rock that rotate. Saturn has 62 moons. Did you know, according to the Bible it says, it pours forth speech. In other words, there are sounds. The planets, the heavens are declaring the glory of God. Now this is actual sound from our smarter people in the world of, the, of, of uh, Saturn. Listen to this. Put it on, guys. Wow, 910 million miles away. And we can, we can hear, we are learning something. It's saying something to us. Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Let me, let me talk not only about our street, let me go a little bit further, our neighborhood. It's called the Milky Way. I, I, thought, it was a mar- I thought it was a chocolate bar. That, our Milky Way, is 100,000 light years in diameter. So put 100,000 times 5.88 trillion, okay? We had to point where the sun was. Guys, we're not even the center of our own neighborhood. Um, it's not about us. The young people, listen to me. We do not revolve, the world does not revolve around you. The world does not revolve around me. By the way, in the Christmas season, the most selfish time of the year, let me remind you, creation, the world, the heavens does not revolve around you. We get to enjoy that in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Beauty, power, majesty. Oh, I got stuck here. I I started to research and look at more. Let me tell you about a black hole in a galaxy called Perseus, 240 million light years away. Look look at that. A, a, A black hole is the gravity is so strong that it pulls everything, even light, so therefore it creates a black hole. We we can hear this. Do you want to hear what a black... This is not created. This is not what NASA thinks. This is actual sound coming waves from there. I don't know how they do this, guys. Put it on, guys. Now, that's eerie. And I'm a little scared of the black hole. It pours forth speech. In the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. Let me tell you, there's a star, an explosion. This is just a, an image that came from NASA and they spot this developed. Look how beautiful that is. If that's not starting to create something in you, go and realizing, whoa, maybe I am not the main thing around here. Maybe, maybe there's something else going on. And this, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we're, I'm only talking about one verse. Elohim, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Isaiah 40, to whom will you compare me? And who is my equal, says the Holy One? 
Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all of these? He who brings out the starry hosts one by one and calls forth each of them by name. He knows every single star by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Psalm 33, it says this, By the word of the Lord, the heavens were created, the starry host by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into a jar. He puts the deep into storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world revere him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Psalm, uh, Psalm 66, 4 says, All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing the praises of your name. Isaiah 55, For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth in singing. And all the trees of the field field shall clap their hands. I love the beauty of this language. But let me show you it. Have you ever gone for a walk and just listened to the beauty and the sound of wind? Some of you use this as a white noise to sleep. The earth is revealing. It's bowing down. It's worshiping. What, 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 what about these beautiful... I mean, there's so many guys. There's so many. The whales. I love the whales. Do you know the whales are worshiping God? Sounds like some of you singing. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Worship Elohim. There's a beauty in God's created design. Beautiful. That's under the water. What about on the uh, on the land? Remember? Rule over, rule over, rule over. What about like the roar of a lion? Like you think you're in Disney World and you're sitting in like Animal Kingdom and you're hearing that? You're going like, whoa. It's, it's not the sound of my stomach before lunch. It's like, God we worship. It's, there's, a, there's an exclamation of adoration to the King of Kings. <laughs> we saw this animal. You all know this animal. It's called a peacock. Have you seen a peacock? Beautiful peacock. Have you ever heard a peacock? Listen. Praise the Lord. After a while, it gets annoying. Praise the Lord! But God doesn't hear. God, God sees it. Beautiful. Creation is worshiping our, the Creator. Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That sign may be annoying to me, but it's beautiful to God's ears because He created it. How much more? How much more? Because the, Psalm 8 says this. When I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you take, that you care for them. What? You, this awesome God, cares for us? Elohim may be like a little... Hard to get your head around, but listen to this. In John chapter 1, it tells us that the Word became flesh, that God became flesh and dwelt among us in the person of Jesus. And in, first, in Corinthians chapter 1, we read that Jesus is the image of the invisible, invisible God. So when we see and read about Jesus, we are seeing characteristics of this invisible God in human form, incarnate, con carne, in person. Jesus in this season is Emmanuel, God with us, not against us. And this Jesus in Matthew 6 says, if Father sustains the birds and the flowers, how much more will he take care of you? I don't understand it. I can't get my head around it. But it draws me to something, guys. 
It draws me to remember that He is worthy of my worship. He created... Guys, if you're going through a tough time, if you can't think right, if you don't think this God or whatever it is, go for a walk. Turn off the noise. Turn off the phone and your TV and your devices and listen to the world proclaiming worship to the Creator because you can't go any further. You will pick up a flower and you'll go, wow. You'll go to the beach and see the dolphin that I love and go, amazing. You will hear the sound of the waves and you will worship the Elohim God that created that, the Elohim God that cares for you. That cares for me. So it's not only a worship in singing. Some of you sound like the peacocks and the whales. I know, I get it. I do too. But it's also a way to remind me that I can trust him. If you spoke our solar system, our neighbor, our just little street, by saying, let it be. Lord, right now I don't see you, feel you, know, I don't even know what's going on, but I can trust you. And Christmas season may be difficult for many of us, but I want to remind you to you that you can trust Him. You can worship Him, you can trust Him, and lastly, we can represent Him. Because for some reason, He said, now you go and be little images, little mirrors of me in this world. So where you walk, follower of Christ, you're my image bearer. So in your driving and your eating and your talking and your walking and your parenting and your finance and your generosity, I just remembered today, which is a great reminder today, that I am not the center of the universe, that God is bigger than this, but God cares, and I'm going to be a representative of Him. Well, without, without, if that is in a, at home with children, in a hospital ward, in the business dealings, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to represent Him. I'm going to reveal His image on earth, and that's why I'm going to live according to His boundaries, define the world like He defines it. Why? Because He knows best. And when we do so, God's plan is to bring structure and order and purpose and beauty to that which we have destroyed. So at all the campuses, I'm calling all all the bands, all the teams, come and join your platforms. Because church, in light of a message like this, in light of a reminder like this, it should lead us. It should, it should compel us to praise. And to praise the only one. The only one who deserves the adoration. The only one who deserves the glory and the honor. Elohim. Which, by the way, it's the first name of many names in the Bible to reveal the character and nature of God. I hope you're going, I need to study more. But we're going to sing of how God reigns above it all. And I'm going to pray, and then you, the teams, you're going to take over, and you're going to praise, and you're going to worship, and I'm going to encourage you. I don't know. Guys, in light of this message, do you not think the God of the universe deserves your worship? Do you not think the God of the universe designed you to worship Him so that you can enjoy Him? So forget about lunch. Your kids are fine. Your business, you're fine. Take these moments, and don't worry, you sound like a peacock to the person beside you. It doesn't matter, but to God's eyes, you were created to represent Him. So let me pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for revealing this amazing God. And Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we worship you. We exalt you. You reign above it all. We submit to you because you are worthy of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Lakewood Ranch, would you stand on your feet, please? Because in Luke chapter 19, it says this. That Jesus said that if the people had not said something, if the people had not shouted Hosanna, the very stones would have cried out. And that's not the stone's responsibility. It is our responsibility. So today, think of this. There are whales doing woo and peacocks going woo and all the stars are doing their signs and God is listening and receiving the adoration of his people and today in this place we're going to say God you're going to reign above it all my anxiety my depression my frustration my I don't know what's going on and Christmas Lord you reign above it all so Franklin team would you lead us just 
reign above it all and worship him because he's worthy of our trust. Church, let's enjoy it.